All right, good morning, everyone. So now we are moving on to unbounded iteration. And it is the complete opposite of your bounded iteration, which means that for this case, we don't know how many times your program should loop. What do we know? We know that there is a terminating value. Um, so instead of saying that find um, the sum of 12 numbers or um, the, you're going to carry out a, bit, a different a particular procedure based on the days of the week, based on the number of students in a class. You won't find it structured like that. What you will find is that you are supposed to continue a loop until a particular value is entered. So here on the screen, you have that a bounded iteration is where instructions are repeated a undetermined number of times. Example, while age is not equal to 99. So right here, our condition is age um, not equal to 999. So you may have five persons who will be using this system. The first person might enter 30. The second person might enter 15. The third person might enter 999. There's a next situation where the first person might enter 999 or the last person might enter 999. We know that the program will loop, we just don't know which individual will enter the terminating value. And that is the difference with your unbounded iteration. So we have two structures that we use with our unbounded. You can use a while do loop and you can use a teeth until loop. So once you're using a for loop, we use a counter, which is checking to see how many slots we have. So you would have five slots because we are going to find the average of five numbers. Let's see. So when the user enters the first number, good, with the for loop, the first number goes into slot number one. So your counter is at number one. Then now, when the, the, you would find the average here. Then when the user enters the second value, when the user enters the second value, counter is at number two. Then if the average is found here with the numbers that's there, then the person is going to enter a second number, a third number, sorry. When that third number is entered, the counter is now at number three. Good. Now that the counter is at number three, it is going to carry out the different calculation. Then the user will be given the instruction to enter next number, which is number four. So the user is going to enter a fourth value. Counter is now at four. The operations will be carried out then the user will be asked to enter a next number which is your fifth number that will happen five different times that's your bounded iteration it will not stop at three it will not stop at two it will not stop at four with your unbounded iterations though what will happen is that it is not going to tell you that you are it is going to loop five times because that we are not sure of. So what we have is a terminating value. So let's say in the same situation here, we have different sections. So we ask the users to enter their age. First person, come on and type 15. Good. The second person come on and type 25. The third person come on and type 999. Nine, nine. The program finished. So this means now that our program would have looped two times. However, the option is also there based on this program. All right, so based on this program, the option is also there where the person, not the person, 
where the program can loop. In the first case, the, the program loops two times, good? So we have the next situation where a person might enter 15 as the first age, 25 as the second age, 30 as the third age, 30 as the third age, um, 99 as the fourth age, and then the fifth person comes on and enter 999. So what we're saying is that with the unbounded iterations, you don't know how many times your program will loop. That all depends on the user and the value that they enter. Good? So in the first case, the program looped twice because the third person entered 999. In this case, this program looped four times. Good? It looped four times because when 999 is entered, the, the program terminated, it stopped. It's going to go to whatever is outside of the loop and continue. All right, good. So we have two structures that we use with our unbounded iteration. We have while and you have repeat until. All right, the while structure um, check for the condition before the instructions in the loop are executed. However, for the repeat until, it's going to carry out the instructions and then check for the condition. So your structure, the syntax for your while loop, you're going to have while, and then you're going to have condition, do, followed by the instructions to be repeated. Then you're going to have your end while. Good. So note now that my condition is to the top. Good. The repeat until structure is different. So what you're going to have now for the repeat until, the syntax would be repeat. Then you would have instructions to be repeated. Then you have your condition. So what I was saying here is that the while construct, the while construct is going to test the condition before it carries out the instructions to be repeated, good? However, your repeat until now, it's going to execute the instructions to be repeated and then it's going to test the condition. That's the difference between the two. All right, so let's look on first question. So write a pseudocode which prompts the user to enter the name of each student in a class terminated by end. Read their names and output the message, good morning, together with their name in the same line of output. So this one is pretty simple. All right. So let's have our program name. So my program name is going to be greeting. All right, then we are going to have our declaration. So the variables that we need here is basically one. So we want to enter name. So we are only going to have name as or in our declaration here, good? Then now we're going to move to the body. Ooh. So we have greetings. Greetings is the name of our algorithm. Our declaration, which is name, because the only thing it asks us to accept or prompt the user to enter name. That's the only thing they ask us to prompt for. Then we're going to have start. So we have to get the instructions to the user. So we're going to ask them to enter their name. All 
then we're going to store name in the variable called name. Good. So after this section now, that's where you would have your while, because we need to check now to ensure that name is not equal to end. Good. So what you would have, you'd have while name, same variable name, and we use the great, the less than followed by the greater than for not equal to end. And normally we put any form of text in quotation. Do. What do we want to happen? Once the condition is not true, we want to output um let me drag this down we want to output the message good day followed by the person's name so you would have right open bracket good day comma name close bracket and then we would have stop and that would be it oh i didn't have my end well Mm -mm. All right, let's look now on repeat until for the same question. So the structure would basically remain the same. The only difference now is that what is to be repeated and the words that we use. All right, can I make copy? No, let me type it over. So you'd have the same um, name for your algorithm, same declaration. Then you would have the body of your algorithm, same structure, right? You ask the person to enter their name. So right here now, what you would have is just the word repeat, followed by what is it that you want to repeat? So you, what you want to repeat is the output statement, which is just good day. And then followed by the person's name. So here now, you would put your condition. So you're going to repeat that until, what's the condition? N is equal to end. So in this case, there's no re, um, end repeat. It's just repeat until, and then we move to stop. So that's the repeat until structure. So you can use any of the two, one, whatever you are comfortable with. However, ensure that you know the while structure, just in case there's a multiple choice question or something else that you may see and you want to, you'll be able to answer it basically. All right, read the question now, guys. Price list, all right, good. I go with that one. All right. What comes next? How many variables do we need? So it says read the description and price of a number of items. Yes, we only need two variables. Very good. All right, so let's have the declaration now. So 
So for decoration, we're going to have this and we're going to have price followed by start. All right, so right here after start, we are going to ask the users to enter the price and the description. Now it says that what will terminate our program is if the if a zero is entered as the price. Good. So here we are going to write. So this is the output part, and we're telling the users what we want them to do, right? So enter item description. That's what we have here. Then now the variable name that we're storing it in, and that is VEC right there. Mm -hmm. Right, very good. All right, what comes next? Then write price. As the mega assume said, then is not a part of it, but we are going to have right. It wouldn't be right price, you know, Jumani. You have to tell them exactly what you want. So it's enterprise because when we move on to the program section, only the first, so this stuff. You have to give clear instructions. So if you just surprise come up on the screen, you're not going to know. So you're right. Exactly what you want them to do. Keyword enter. Enter price. Or enter item price. All right. So what is it we're storing it in now? Okay. All right. Very good, Ronaldo. So now you'd have read price. All right, so what comes next now? Now we're going to have our while structure. What would come next? Good. So it is while, you guys catching on. So while price is not equal to zero, do. All right, so what should happen if the condition is false? So basically what we're going to do now is that we're going to output the price. All right, so let's go now. So here you would have write because this is output that we're outputting here. So you would have description. Because we're outputting a price list, comma, and we have here price. So that's it. Then now we're going to put the variable name there. So these would be like the labels at the top. And then underneath, you're going to have this. Come on. And then price would come on this side. All right, so that's that part. What comes next? So this is now our label. That's the description and price right here. Because it's in quotation, it's going to come out as text. Then now you have the comma and then price. Normally, like in Pascal, you'd have to put like a null bracket right there. But because this is algorithm, this can't work. All right, good. So now we can have our end while. And then we would have stop. And that would be the while structure for that. Because what we want is like a label um, calling. So what will come up on the screen, let me show you. What I want to come up on the screen is this. I want the description 
and then over here a one price. So that's that's why I have these in quotation so those would come out as is. Then now underneath, let's say for instance you enter bread and then the price of the bread is two hundred dollars, then it should show like that. So the next time now when the program loop and somebody has enter a value, then what should output is sugar and then 300. So the, the top part here, which is description and price, which is in quotation, is basically a heading because it says print a price list. It's not that you must do it like this. I'm just saying this is just my structure. So you could have description, and then beside it, you put this, which is you could have had the item description, right? So item this oh item description is, and then you could have that, and that would have been fine followed by the same thing, item price is, and then have price as the variable name there. This is just a next way of doing that part. 